Welcome back, my name is Rodney and this is Quick Spot Co. This video is all about Fantastic Beasts Illustrated Edition because I was doing some research to try and find out more about the Crimes of Grindelwald film that's coming to come out and I'm going to focus on a few particular beasts that I think we need to pay attention to. So, let's go on with the video. One of the new beasts in the Fantastic Beasts trailer is the Orgrey. I think that's the bird that kind of flows down behind Jacob and looks at him with his yellow eyes. I think that's the Orgre. A few people online have agreed with that as well. Now it's interesting to learn that the Orgre has a distinct, distinctive low and throbbing cry which was once believed to foretell death. However, the Orgre merely sings at the approach of rain. I'm not sure how any of those factors will help in the Crimes of Grindelwald, but it's interesting to learn anyway. Since we saw the cover, of the Crimes of Grindelwald screenplay that was at Zyma Mina Lima. There are so many different things to see there. Towards the top left and right corner, there's like a snake. The first one that came, comes to anyone's mind is a basilisk, but they do appear to be as dangerous to dark wizards as non-dark wizards because only if you're parcel mouth, you can control. So it'll be interesting to learn if that snake is a basilisk, then does that mean a dark wizard is part of Grindelwald's like gang? or himself is a parcel mouth. I think it'll be a bit stranger if he is a parcel mouth. I think there'd be too much of a tie between Voldemort, but it could be, you never know. From the Fantastic Beasts trailer, we also see that Newt is riding underwater what looks like a horse made of seaweed. Now, according to the Fantastic Beasts Illustrated, I would think that's a Kelpie, and it seems like a lot of other people agree that's a Kelpie as well. It does it, it's a water demon that takes various shape, Although it most often appears as a horse with ball rushes for a mane, so it must be that one. It's interesting to learn as well that the world's largest kelpie is found in Loch Ness, Scotland. Its favourite form is that of a sea serpent, so I guess that explains the Loch Ness monster. We, it's not sure if Light Newt is actually going to, when he's an adult, going back to Hogwarts, but wouldn't it be funny that if he does go, and then while he's in Scotland, he has to for some reason deal with a kelpie? there and it could be the Loch Ness Monster. One of my favourite beasts from the first Fantastic Beasts film was the Niffler and I'm sure many people would agree it's so cute and so funny but I was saddened to see that we didn't see it in the new trailer for Crimes of Grindelwald but I was then pleased to see it on the cover of the screenplay so it must feature again. Jacob Rowling has obviously answered our wishes to see more of the Niffler so we will be seeing the Niffler in the new film but how is he going to play a part? It does say that Nifflers are often kept by goblins to like find treasure. So will we be seeing some more goblins in the Fantastic film and will this Niffler actually be owned by the goblin or will it be Newt's Niffler? Again, we'll have to wait and find out. Now this other beast is just a theory, but I think it might be part of the new film and that is the red cap. Now the red cap are a dwarf-like creatures that live in holes on old battlegrounds or wherever human blood has been spilled. Now, okay, obviously it's associated with not the most happy situations. Although easily repelled by charms and hexes, they are very dangerous to sultry muggles whom they will attempt to bludgeon to death on dark nights. Red caps are most prevalent in Northern Europe. I'm not sure yet how the red cap is going to feature in the Fantasby storyline. Now, the only muggle that I know of in the Fantasby storyline, well, the only one that I care about, is Jacob. So I'll be very scared to learn if Jacob has a run in with a red cap that tries to kill him. Hopefully, he can defend himself and not be killed by the red cap. Ooh. So now after looking through the Fantastic Beasts Illustrated Edition, this has turned into more of like a Fantastic Beasts theory book, but you can't help but be drawn in by all the amazing illustrations of this book. I would really re recommend getting it. It is a fantastic read. There are so many additions in this. The illustrations are beautiful. What are you waiting for? Grab it. And after all, it's for charity. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed some of those Fantastic Beasts theories and also having a look at the Fantastic Beasts Illustrated Edition. If you have, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below if you have any theories that I would have missed or also some theories. Do you agree with any of them? I mean, I might be very far off, but you know, who knows? If you're new to this channel, please do subscribe for more of the same Wizarding World content. You can do that by clicking on that box over there. And if you missed my last week's video, you can find that by clicking on that box over there. And as you know by now, the Wizarding World is just one spell away.